12 News is your local election headquarters. Voting in the Congressional District 1 primary is underway. And joining us live from one of the polling places in Providence is Kim Kalunian. And Kim, you said a couple hundred people have voted there today. Yeah, Kayla, that's right. At last check, the poll workers just before 4 o'clock told me more than 400 people have cast their ballots here today. Of course, there's been early in-person voting and mail ballots as well. So we're going to get into all of that right now because I'm joined by Rhode Island Secretary of State Greg Amore. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Kim. So first of all, any issues at any of the polling places today? So far, so good. Very smooth. That's good. And, you know, when I went in to talk to the poll workers, you were in there delivering some cookies. You've been doing that? We started this morning very early. We've been to about 11 polling locations thanking these workers. You know, it's, it's incredibly important that we have folks who are willing to do this. Yeah. Uh, and so we want to make sure they're appreciated. Uh, they are the bedrock of our democracy. So as I mentioned, um, more than 15,000 people have voted so far today, more than 400 of them right here. For people at home who are watching who haven't cast their ballots yet, what should they know? So the polls are open till 8 o'clock. Uh, and they can go to their polling location until 8. Uh, but if they're in line at 8, hmm. uh, then they can stay in that line and they'll be allowed to vote. Um, and if they're unsure where their polling location is, because the polling locations are different yeah. uh, than in a normal election. Um, and so they can go to our website uh, and, and look at that at, at vote.ri.gov and, and plug in their information and, and they can figure out where their, where their polling location is. There's a wealth of information at vote.ri.gov. I was mentioning at the top of the hour, this turnout tracker, it's publicly available. It's refreshed every single hour, so people can go and check that out as well. Yeah, it's fantastic. And, and we have a, a, a young woman named Jess Sigmund. Who, who controls that uh, data for us. She is outstanding, um, and it's a, it's a good public service. It's transparency at its best, and I know you folks use it all the time. We certainly I do. I talked to Joe Fleming earlier, and he said he's been looking at it all day. Yeah, it's a great it's a great tool. I encourage people to look at it, especially, especially if you like data like we do. Um, I've gotten some questions from people, Secretary, about how we ended up with a special election the day after Labor Day. So how did we end up here? So this is actually a, a very normal cycle, mm. right? This is, this is when we normally have our primaries, and generally, it just happened to fall on a on the day after a, a holiday. And there's been uh, legislation in the General Assembly for years uh, which would move uh, this date to Wednesday. That legislation has not moved. Okay. Uh, the governor chose this date from two options that we provided for him. Um, and I think people are interested and, and you know, they're going to come out uh, post-holiday uh, wh whether whether or not uh, the, the election fits their schedule. And I want to ask you a question about uh, the way that we currently vote using paper ballots. We've talked about the fact that there is on the Democratic ballot a candidate who has since withdrawn, who's no longer running. This has happened many times before. Sure. Is paper the best way to vote in 2023? Where I imagine if you had a digital ballot, you could just a Erase that name. Yeah, it, it is the best way to vote. You know, p paper gives us a, a, a receipt. Mm. Uh, it's a, it's a trackable uh, measure. And so, what we know amongst elections officials around the country is that paper is the gold standard for just that reason. We know that we can look at the receipts, we can do audits with them, uh, and people have confidence that there is something we can look at after the fact. And confidence in voting is certainly key. It is, Secretary of State Greg Amore. That's all the time that we have. But thanks so much for joining us live here at Thanks, Four. Kim.